Wogan's guests for Wednesday night include Leslie Phillips. Then at 7.40, Timothy tries to break the habit. I would, I would like to be a real monk. You know, I've been practicing celibacy. And I've almost got the hang of it. At 10 past 8, John Taylor's faced with a lynch mob. There's men killing. We're here to set things straight. In the final part of Echoes in the Darkness at 9.30, the police are joined by the FBI. But evidence remains scarce. We're going to file charges, and if the FBI don't like it, the FBI don't have to be there when we arrest her. You're making a big mistake. I'm making something happen. Wednesday night on One. In tonight's programme, passenger trains run in the Midlands for the first time during the NUR strike when one man goes into work. As the hot weather continues, the risk of fire grows to our countryside and the hundreds of children running off to Birmingham to join the circus. Join us for Midlands today. On BBC Two shortly, Deaf Two with Buck Rogers in the 25th century. This is BBC One. Clock News from the BBC with Nicholas Witchell and Moira Stewart. Good evening. The headlines at six o'clock. British Rail is saying that more than 12,000 railmen defied the latest one day strike. A few trains did run, but the NUR is saying the BR figures are grossly exaggerated. The man wanted for questioning about the murder of Annette Wade has been arrested in Dover. Three people have died in outbreaks of salmonella poisoning in North Wales and North West England. The Prime Minister's message to Mr Hurd, you still have my greatest confidence, but the reshuffle rows continue. Also tonight, police in London are hunting bank robbers who shot and killed an elderly man who tried to stop them. And Iran after the Ayatollah, a special report on the problems which face a new president. The first cracks in the national rail strike appeared today as the NUR called out its members for the sixth time. Some of them defied the union and went to work. British Rail is claiming that more than 12,000 of the NUR's 72,000 members reported for duty. If that's true, that's one in six of them, and some train services did run. But the union has called BR's figures grossly inaccurate and said the strike was still solid. The NUR leader, Jimmy Knapp, called it a pitiful return, considering BR's efforts to persuade staff to break the strike. Tomorrow, the NUR's executive will meet to consider what to do next. It's thought that there will be pressure to settle for the figure of 8.8%, which was unexpectedly rejected last week.